Um, so first, let me say thank you. Uh, it's great to see a full house here, uh, especially day two at the end of the summit. And I think it just is a testament to the excitement that's building up around this community. And uh, clearly an exciting action-packed two days, uh, a, lot of, a lot of things. And uh, I know many of you don't know me, um, but I'm excited, and I will show you the face of excitement. <laughs> that is the face of excitement. <laughs> but I am excited, and I'll tell you why in a couple minutes. All right, and so that's me on Twitter. Um, so, you know, as we look at the world today, more and more applications are being published and pushed to clouds. The concept of the data center is fading into the past, right? On-premise data center client server. We've now emerged into the world of cloud computing and mobile access to that. Right? So more and more applications today, and the growth of these applications are growing at double digits, cloud-native applications. But there's this perception that all clouds are created equal. And some customers, and especially some of the early adopters, are finding out that that may not necessarily be true. In some cases, they are, and in many cases, they're not. So this notion of a cloud foundry is compelling and profound and critical to cloud-native applications. And it's critical for a multi-cloud world. If the world devolves into a single cloud provider, we don't need cloud foundry, right? Because it's a single, uniform, homogeneous cloud. But the world will be multi-cloud. Cloud foundry is a critical part of that. And you here in this audience can help make the difference. I'm convinced 133% then 140% confident in five years' time, we'll look back on the, this community here and say, these folks here have changed the world. So you can make the difference. And as a result, all cloud-native applications can be deployed via a cloud foundry. So a little you know, quick background about myself. Uh, started at AMC in uh, 1985, believe it or not. Uh, engineer number five at the company, and I've been in data storage development up until about seven, eight months ago. And uh, I started at EMC when I was right out of preschool and uh, have been doing product development. And then I jumped, I took the red pill, I call it if you watch the movie The Matrix. So I took the red pill in October, and it's been quite the ride. And now I'm kind of looking at the world from a different side, kind of from the platform down instead of the infrastructure up. So I can look you in the eye and say, I have seen clouds from both sides now. <laughs> so now I drew the cut line at 40. I know where you all are sitting. All the, all the millennials are like, what is he talking about? So there's this, uh, if, you, if you're a millennial, there's Joni Mitchell back in the 70s. And she sang about cloud illusions. And there are illusions about cloud. There are perceptions about clouds. And customers' experience are different than their perceptions. The perceptions are that they're created equal and clouds never come down. Right? I turn a cloud off, uh, on it and it should never, never, ever come down. And our data is safe in the cloud. Right? I put it there. I don't have to worry about backup and things like that, because when I put it there, it's always there, regardless of what my retention policies are. And I can save money in the cloud, right? But customers are finding out, hey, that stove is hot. And when I touch it, I can burn my hand. And sometimes it's painful once I'm into a cloud infrastructure. It's hard to get out. And that is a picture of me when I started at EMC. I just brought it along just to prove the point. So I asked this question about a month ago. John Rose, our CTO, is here. He held a summit, technical leadership summit, for all our distinguished engineers and fellows at EMC. And I posed this question, what differentiates a good cloud from a bad cloud? And uh, there's roughly about 150 people in the room, and I got a lot of different answers and attributes of what does differentiate. And it means different things to different people. Right? I can run my workloads, and it's predictable. I got a great user experience. I can meet my recovery time objectives. 
I have great performance or good per, uh, efficiency or ease of use. It's easy for me to deploy my applications into the cloud. I don't have to worry about security. I get business value out of that. So many things to many people. And the answer is all of the above, right? These are the attributes that the customers and people that are publishing applications to clouds worry about. And it's really the quality of service that you get out of the service and the service provider that you have. Quality not in the sense that it works, right, or availability. Quality in, in the sense of the quality and the value that you get in your experience and how you do business with your cloud service providers. How many have written this command? Okay, so a question. When you push your app, does you, do you push it to a good cloud or a bad cloud? Or how do you know, right? How, how can I be confident that when I'm writing that command, I'm pushing to the right cloud, right? Based on my governance risk and compliance policies, based on my business requirements, you know, whether it be retention policies or whatever. Right, so this is what I mean by the differentiation of good clouds and bad clouds. So I have a dream. I am sticking with the 60s and 70s theme here today. So I have a dream uh, when, we look, when I look at this uh, community and the things that we hopefully are about to achieve. And so what if we or you as customers could deploy and manage all IT applications and services onto any IS stack easily and consistently with confidence that it meets all your business objectives. Right, so there's a lot of breakouts about what applications are good for Cloud Foundry. Right, what applications are good to run on certain types of clouds, whether they be on-premise or off-premise hybrid clouds. Right, and so what if we could solve this problem holistically so we didn't have to care and we didn't have to differentiate? And when we pushed and published applications, we didn't have to worry about the fact that our business requirements may or may not be met. And what if we could understand this up front, right, instead of finding out the hard way and finding out that that stove is hot when we touch that? So I have a wish list uh, for 2015 uh, for the community. And part of that wish list, uh, I have like three, three requests. There's this challenge with non-12 uh, factor applications and persistent data. What if we could solve this problem holistically, right? And we can expand the set of applications that can be deployed to clouds, not just stateless apps, but stateful apps, and do that in a holistic way, more like a software-defined way, right? What if, what if I could uh, solve that problem of persistent storage and provide persistent data uh, services around that and do that in the DevOps lifecycle versus having to stand up persistent storage you know, later, uh, you know, later down the chain. So what if we could solve that problem, deploy it as software upfront? And I'll come back to that in a minute. Number two is, what if we had an open industry marketplace for PaaS and IaaS microservices and software? Uh, the benefit of the marketplace is I can go into the marketplace and I can see that the chocolate is next to the peanut butter, right? And when I see the chocolate next to the peanut butter, I can do different things with that. Versus today, you know, we have chocolate in one marketplace and peanut butter in another. So what if we had an open marketplace approach to Cloud Foundry? If there is only one cloud provider that starts with an A, uh, if you look at their marketplace, it's a one-stop shop for software, right? And the chocolate is next to the peanut butter, right? And we can do a lot better if we can start to look at what services and software that we can offer in a marketplace that's available to all. Right, so some of the challenges that, that, that we have, I think, as an industry is getting to that, right? Because we still are competitors, uh, are partners in the industry. We have our own different approaches. Things are different, uh, you know, priorities. But we also don't offer a place in which any independent software vendor can publish 
software into our marketplace, per se, whereas the public cloud does. And what if that marketplace included not just PaaS, but IaaS, and EMC being obviously a data storage and infrastructure company, what if some of the services or microservices, I guess it's an overused term, but uh, things that are kind of thinner, deployed as software, or stood up as a service, what if we could deploy persistent storage services or microservices? Not just for block and volumes, right, but solve that problem holistically around file, around object. And if we know that we've got wonking blocks of flash that are closely, that's a WBOF for technical term, but if we had lots of flash closely coupled with compute, could we do some interesting things up front? Could we deploy in memory uh, uh, NoSQL? Could we do that better, having that knowledge? What if we could integrate backup and deploy backup as a service uh, much more efficiently and effectively, or reduce some of the replication into a thinner set of services to either replicate at a VM level or maybe even a container level. What about data security? Things like data shredding. If I'm moving my information, my, if I use Cloud Foundry for portability of my applications and content, and I move that, how can I be certain that I shred that data? So data shredding, um, we used to call that data corruption in the data storage industry. Um, but there are capabilities that we can bring to bear to ensure that you're meeting your compliance requirements uh, for data. What about mobility and access and things like active data or migration capabilities that were offered or data optimization? Right? There's uh, service providers offering, uh, offering elastic block or elastic file on Flash. What if we optimize for that? because we know that not all information is created equally. And what if we provide data deduplication services on top of that? And then finally, what if we worked better together with the OpenStack community? If you look at the, the two big open source barbells, or the ends of the barbell in the industry, with OpenStack at the IS level, Cloud Foundry at the platform level, what if we work better together to provide a service catalog that could be offered up and we could do a better job of application workload placement based on the requirements of the application, right? And do that effectively um, to IaaS clouds. And if we did this, could we further change the world? I'm convinced we're gonna look back five years from now and say, wow, you know, look at what was done by this community. It established a critical component of cloud architectures, and it's called Cloud Foundry. And I fundamentally believe that we can change the world with that. So to help uh, EMC in March, mid-March, it was roughly about two months after the formation of the Cloud Foundry Foundation, announced the first uh, Cloud Foundry Dojo. Uh, this is going to be in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, co-located uh, with uh, our team from our CTO office, also in a great community, right? Right next to MIT, there's Google, there's Microsoft nerds in the neighborhood. Um, so it's a lot of uh, great innovation and incubation ground. So that opens midsummer of this year. We'll be able to bring developers in, uh, go through the six-week program dojo program uh, for paired programming and test-driven development. And you can follow us at, uh, on Twitter at emccfdojo or uh, email us at cfdojo at emc.com. So in conclusion, um, more and more applications are being pushed and published to clouds. The model is off-premise, the concept of the data center is fast becoming an artifact of the past. So Cloud Foundry is transformational. It is a critical component as we look forward. This community is making the difference. And um, as a result of that, we will be able to change the world. Thank you for uh, your participation here and going forward. And um, also thanks for participating in the conference today. Thank you. Thank you.